Annette Carvalho and her daughter Natalia sat in front of the large old coal wood desk where boy Nakualava sat looking at the both of them intently. On either side of him also sat Ivan Poi Poi and Tiny Kamakia. Annette awaited boy's approval before she began speaking. The three men looked at each other and Ivan Poi Poi said, Whenever you guys are ready, we can start. Looking at Tiny, boy asked, How's your schedule today? Oh, Tiny said, I don't have to go drive bus until a tree so I get time. What about you, Ivan? Boy asked. My granddaughter's soccer game, Pau at four. That's when I have to go pick her up, otherwise my day is pretty much open, he said. Okay, Mrs. Carvalho, Boy nodded. Go ahead. Ah, Annette sighed. It's such a long story. Let me just show you. Looking at her daughter, Annette told Nathalia to open her hands so that she could show it to the three men. When she held up her hands up in front of her boy, Ivan and Tiny saw that both hands were heavily wrapped in white towels. Should I take off the towel so that you folks can see? Annette asked. Yes, boy replied. Looking at Nathalia, he motioned with his hands and spoke to her. Come, put your hands on a desk and take off the towels and let's take a look. As Nathalia placed her hands on the desk, her mother began to remove the athletic tape that prevented the towels from coming apart. She spread out each towel under each hand and let them lay there. Tiny and Ivan got up from their chairs and examined the girls' hands briefly and then sat back down. They both looked at each other with blank expressions on their faces, but neither made any attempt to offer their assessment of the girls' condition. That responsibility belonged to boy and they would not speak until Boy spoke first and asked for their opinion. Nathalia's hands were swollen, and both were colored with a deep purple hue, which ended just below the wrist bone. It did not seem to go up any further. Hmm. Yo kepa ele ele, Boy said plainly. Again, Ivan and Tiny looked at one another and slowly shook their heads. Yo kepa ele ele, what is that? Annette asked. Not what, Boy replied. Who? I don't understand, Annette said. Yokepa Ele Ele is the Hawaiian name for a gentleman that my friends and I know as Joe Black. Slightly gesturing toward Nathalia's hands, Boy continued, Your daughter's condition is a result of Joe Black's work. This is the kind of thing that he's known for. You see, Joe Black is by no means an evil man, nor does he have an evil bone in his body, and neither is he vindictive. This is the reason he's well respected in our circle and in the community in general, but make no mistake, Joe Black is a very, very, very powerful man. Your daughter's condition isn't random because that's not the way Joe operates. He is purposeful and exacting. Looking directly into Nathalia's eyes, Boy said, you must have done something to make him very upset, and just by the looks of what has happened to you, it's safe to say that you must have stolen something from him. There was a dead silence in the room for a second as Annette began to take in what she had just heard. Wait, but the doctor said that there's no circulation going to her hands, which is supposed to be why her hands are that color. And now you're telling me that a kahuna did this? I'm sorry, but I have to believe the doctors, and there is no way that my daughter is a thief. And why did you come here? Boy asked. Well, I thought you could give her some kind of lomi to make the blood in her body recirculate back into her hands, Annette replied. Smile, uh, smiling now, Boy began to explain, I think you may have a misunderstanding of what it is we do here. I think I do. Annette was now becoming visibly upset. I would like to know exactly what it is that you do here. All right, Boy said. Looking at Ivan and Tiny, he asked the men to spread out both of the towels more evenly beneath Natalia's hands. If you will allow me, I will show you exactly what it is that we do here, Boy said. Now looking at Nathalia, he asked her, may I? Offering no resistance, Nathalia nodded her head in approval. Boy and Ivan and Tiny began to remove all of the items on Boy's desk and place them on a large coffee table nearby. Boy now leaned forward across his desk and placed both of his hands around the girl's forearms and began to pull firmly down very slowly toward her own darkened hands. As Boy began to apply more pressure, the closer he got to Nathalia's wrists, everyone in the room noticed that the skin on the girl's hands were beginning to crack open. Yellow pus began to ooze out, and the smell coming from the wound itself was overwhelming to the point where Annette began to gag. Applying more pressure now, as Boy's hands were just at the girl's wrists, 
maggots were now crawling out from the cracks along with some darker colored liquid. It was too much for Natalia. She began to scream in horror. Her mother stood there in shock with both hands over her mouth. She stood riveted to the spot. She could not move. Boy let go of Natalia's hands and nodded at Ty Tiny and Ivan, who instantly took their cue and began to clean up the contents of what spilled over into the towel and on the desk. Afterwards, they both escorted Natalia to the bathroom and helped her to wash her hands and then put a clean wrap around it. In the meantime, Boy came from around the desk and gently led Annette back to her chair and gave her a shot of whiskey. It'll help take the edge off, Boy said. Ivan and Tiny returned with the girl, and after helping her to her chair, the men returned to their place on either side of Boy's desk. Sitting on the edge, the front of his desk, before the two women, he began to explain. We offer a unique service here that is not advertised or promoted. Because of the delicate nature of our business, we only go by word of mouth. What we do is, we assess people's personal circumstances and, depending upon the validity of the reasons in which they come to us, we put a curse on their enemies, on their behalf, so to say. Oh my God, Annette muttered, what do we get ourselves into? Here my daughter tells me that her hands feel numb and that it turns all swollen and bruised colored, and the doctors tell me one thing, and now this? Why did you frickin' lie, Nat? Oh, I tell you, if these guys were in here, I'd punch you in your face, her mother screamed. All right, all right, I frickin' stole a gold locket from this Volkswagen bug that was sparked on Day Street, okay? The idiot owners of the car left the window open, so I thought nobody was gonna miss it. It's their fault for being so stupid in the first place. Nathalia shouted back at her mother. Now looking at Boy, Nathalia asked, You can take this thing off, right? This curse? You can, right? Boy took his cell phone from his pants pocket and began to dial a number. He held up one finger toward Nathalia, indicating that he would have her answer in a second. Yo kepa. Aloha. Wa o boy keia. Peawa. Boy said in Hawaiian. E kamakua loya. Wa lilo ia kikahi lei kula yaoi. The woman could see that Boy was now listening to the answer of his question. It was obvious he was speaking to Joe Black. Eh, 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 eh. Ah. Mahalo piha nui ya oi. Kamakua han wano. Aloha. Boy turned off his phone and put it back in his pocket. That was Joe Black. He did say that indeed someone had stolen a gold chain from his granddaughter's car. It happened to be the same Volkswagen that you just mentioned, and it is that same Volkswagen that Joe bought for his granddaughter as her graduation present after she finished high school. That gold chain you stole came with the car. It belonged to Joe Black's late grandmother and was given to his granddaughter by him as an heirloom for her children and grandchildren to one day inherit. Annette couldn't believe what she was hearing as she glared at her daughter. Looking at Boy, she began to plead with him, just as her own daughter had done earlier. You can remove this curse from her, right? All she has to do is give the chain back and it will be all over, right? Then her hands will be back to normal. Taking in a long breath, Boy slowly exhaled before he answered. The former I can't do, because the only person who can remove the curse is Joe Black himself. As for the latter, it may not even matter at this point. According to what Joe just shared with me over the phone, what has been done cannot be undone. The curse will continue to do its work until your daughter's hands literally rot away and become as nothing. It will also serve as a warning to anyone else who tries to steal from Joe Black again. Now Annette was infuriated at what she just heard. Her mind wouldn't allow herself to believe in the finality of it all. Grabbing her daughter, Annette began to leave the office, but not without a few final words. I am going to get the best doctors to fix this so that my daughter can go back to living a normal life. After that, I'm coming back here with lawyers and the church too in order to shut down this abominable racketeering operation you have going here. Taking people for their money the way you folks do is disgusting. Damn you ought to hell, you Hawaiians. You're still living in the Stone Age. Ma'am, we haven't taken any money from you, and we haven't asked you for anything. You came to us, Boy said calmly. Doesn't matter. Who will wait till people find out about you guys, who you guys are, and what it is that you guys do here? You guys are going to be up to here in Meldish, up to your neck. As Annette was now halfway out the door with Nathalia, Boy called out one final warning. Mrs. Carvalho, you can't tell anyone about what happened here or who we are. 
That's a strict tradition that has no room for compromise. You go straight to hell, you bloody no good Hawaiian. I'll see you in hell before I listen to anything you say. With that, Annette Carvalho and her daughter were gone. Bravo, tiny ass. Who took this lady's call? Not me, Ivan said. Boy, she didn't call you. Nope, I didn't get a call from her either, boy answered. Ah, probably should have grave fine, I think, Tiny offered. We'll be hearing from her in about three days. In the meantime, we have another matter to attend to later this evening. About midnight, boy said. Oh, what is this one, Tiny asked. Oh, you never hear. We have to punish one of our own. That's why we're meeting tonight on neutral grounds on the Mohakaka, Ivan replied. Oh, oh, what is that? Kukani loko? Tiny asked. Nope, boy replied. Young Street Cities.